Hello world, we have time here, bringing to you another super project episode. Today, we're going to be covering a little thing that I've really wanted to build for a while, but haven't had the time to do it. It is called the Nexus. The Nexus is something found in the Mist games. And this system mainly uses Mistcraft and Red Power to get everything done. As you see, here's a Mistcraft stand, nothing really special about it. But there's two systems right here, an input and an output. All you have to do is go to the monitor and select a book that you'll want. Let's go 65. And I'm going to call the book number 65 to the stand. It's actually age 90, but whatever. And once I'm done with that, I just send it back. Simple. So, as I was saying before, the Nexus is something found in Uru Live, an online mist game. The Nexus... The whole point of the Nexus is that you can go to a terminal, go and find the book that you want, and call that book, and it'll appear right in front of you on a stand. Then all you'd need to do is go up to it and link, and you'll enter your world that you have selected. Now the internals of this uh, contraption aren't too complicated so it will be a breeze to show it. To manage to get multiple linking books in one area and to control them you have to use a computer and a bunch of IO expanders. More on the expanders in a bit. Here you see single cell modules consisting of magtube, an accelerator that's powered, filter, book and stand, another filter and decelerator with another mag tube, and a wire and a NOT gate. What happens is that you send a command in your monitor to the computer which changes the IOX address to go to the desired IO expander. Then that expander flips to the wire that you want. So for instance, when we type in 65 call, what it is actually saying is that I want to go to IO expander number 4, which is here, and to activate the orange wire, which is here. And as you see, book 90 is gone, which is in the 65 slot. What it does is when the orange wire is powered right here, it deactivates the NOT gate, allowing the filter to open. All the other filters, however, are powered and will not allow any books to pass through it. Thus guaranteeing when you send the book back, so it will go to the linking book stand that it needs to go to. Now when you want to do a different book it will require a different number. All you have to do is type in the number. So I have another, another book ready. So 85 call and this time it will decode it IO expander number 5 and wire number 6. So if we go here, wire number 6 is line, and it's gone. Now when you send it back, it will only go to that filter. This will guarantee that you can keep track of your books. The delay can be modified, and you can look in one of my EE Power episodes to see what happens with that. Now you might be asking, how many books can this simple system hold? Well, while maintaining complete control, you can see that this uh, 
you can see that an IO expander can go up to 8 bits, which in turn means 256 different IO expanders. So if you want, you can expand it a lot down and it works out to roughly 4,000 books. But wait, what if I am doing a multiplayer server and I have more than 4,000 books? Well, that's a lot of books for one. And two, that will bring us to another system entirely. If you're one of those people in a multiplayer server who wants to have all of the linking books in one single place, then this upgraded design is probably for you. This design is handled by multiple computers. What it does is it takes a command from this monitor here. Let's go with one that we already did. It takes a command similar, pretty much exactly the same as the smaller design, but it requires a bit of a bigger number, which it then decodes and sends the appropriate book, which then you can send back by just doing that. What this does is it divides the 16 bits into different sections for it to decode. The first four bits are the initial IO expander selection. So for instance, this central computer, which is connected to the monitor, it then, for instance, with the number I put in, 20546, those first four bits, if you read them in binary, they translate to 5. So this computer changes its address to 5. So it goes all the way down looking for the IO expander. Hey, here's number 5. Then what it does is it sends to that expander the rest of the number. So for instance, in our case, it would be corresponding to 66. 66 is the last 12 bits. The middle 8 bits are the secondary IO expanders. What are handled by this computer, which is connected to its own IO expander. This computer decodes those remaining 12 bits, those first 8 bits that it sees, which are the original eight middle bits, goes to its own IO expander. In this case, it's four. And then it decodes the rest of it and sends that signal to here. So in our case, it was magenta, which is corresponding to three, or the last four bits that are sent here. Now you're probably wondering, how does this computer handle all of that information? What you have to do is take your Nexus component disk, and I've got a computer set up ready to go for all of that information. You take your Nexus component disk, put it in, and start up your system. And then what you want to do is type in Nexus, and it'll do a continual loop checking whether the information that's encoded in this wire changes. If it does and changes to a number not zero, it will change the rest of the stuff accordingly, the expanders and then the wires. If it turns back to zero, it goes through it and turns everything off. So let's go with an old book that we recognize. 16,449. It's a bit padded, but when we call it, you will see that it's age 90 that we went to earlier. It has a different number, but you can see it's the same book. And send it back. Now there are some workarounds that you can do to ensure that you don't have to continually type such broad numbers. What you can do instead is either modify call 
to put an at symbol at the very beginning so that it can just register age 90 as a variable or you can just simply make age 90 a simple variable declare it as 16449 and then just type age 90 at and call it will just call age 90 for you to go to well that's all for this episode if you like what you see don't forget to rate comment and subscribe I will soon post all of the code in a paste bin document for you to improve upon my code and my design. I might even throw in this world for a little fun into the nice package. Wave time. Signing off. Have a wonderful day. By the way, if you would like to see how I made and designed one of these modules, you can check in my EE Power Series for episode number 36 entitled The Nexus. I pretty much go through step by step some of my thoughts for this system. So if you want to look and improve upon the design yourself, by all means, go for it. Bye, guys.